Okay, in this video we're going to see a very important aspect of R, um, which is functions. Now R is really great because um, it's so easy to just create a new function. Um, and, uh, and by function we basically mean shorthand to, uh, to, to not have to write lots of code. So um, a function can be something very simple and, and the general syntax for it, so let's create a function called F1. And we use the keyword function and then we say the name of the variables and then some curly brackets and what the function will do. Um, so for example we can set r and we can use an if statement so if x percentage percentage 2 now that is modulo so in other words if the remainder of x modulo 2 is 0 in other words if um, if x is even um, then return x plus 3 else return x plus 2. In other words, we definitely want uh, an, uh, an odd number. And then we return r. So there's two keywords there, the, the function, then just some normal r code, and then what we actually want the result of the function to be. So if I run that, oops, wrong, yeah, if I run that, and now if I take a look at ls, we see we've got a new um, a new object which is f1 which is just a function and so now I can say alright f1 of 3 uh, whoops not f, f1 of 3 is 5 because 3 is not odd so it returned um, 3 plus 2 okay and then f1 of uh, 82 is 85 so that's a very nice way of just getting simple functions in R that allow you to do uh, more complex stuff um, they can be more complicated, of course. You, you can have like my plot um, is a function, and here I'm not actually going to give it an argument. You don't have to give it an argument. So it can just be shorthand for code that you'll write again and again. And so, for example, r equals the histogram of jjj dollar um, height dot in dot meters, um, and then just return r. You, you could also get a well let's let's run that and then if we just type in my plot with the brackets we get um, the histogram. Okay? Um, now you, you don't need to go through this this step of r and then uh, and then returning r assigning r and then returning r you, you could just put that directly there um, that's that's fine. And so if we redefine that um, and run my plot we get the same uh, graph okay um, so some simple functions but we can do things a bit more um, uh, a bit more complicated so let's take a look at our JJJ data set and um, we see we've got everyone's savings there well let's assume that we know everyone goes on a shopping trip and we want to know how much savings they've got after their shopping trip. So let's let's create a little function. Uh, so let's call it shopping. Shopping. And it's going to be function of spend. And um, we're going to say new savings. New savings um, is JJJ dollar savings dot in dot pounds um, minus spend. So remember, savings in pounds is this vector uh, of 13 or so rows, um, elements, sorry, I'm going to take away spend from it, which is just going to be one, one number, but that's remember is a vector, and so R is going to do some recycling. And then within our function, we create JJJ after shopping. And we're simply going to call that a data, make that a data frame of JJJ dollar name and old dot savings. So we're going to create a variable called old. I'll use an underscore instead of a dot. Doesn't really matter. Old savings. We're calling the current savings JJJ dollar say um, savings dot in dot pounds we're calling that old savings and we want that in there and then we'll, let me just uh, spread this over so we can actually see everything and then the 
the final column of this data uh, frame is going to be new savings. And then what we want to return is JJJ after shopping. Now, assuming I made no mistakes, if I run all that, this function uh, gets created. And so let's take a look. Joe has 200 pounds, so let's see what happens if um, people go on a 50 pound shopping trip. See, Joe now is 150. Julie, however, who's only about three years old, is that right? Two years old, only had 1.5 pounds to her name. She doesn't have much money left. Okay, now that hasn't created the data set. All right. If we look at LLS, there is no JJJ after shopping. JJJ after shopping was just a local variable to this function, and we returned that. Okay, so I could, of course, set something. So I could set um, blah, 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 how do I spell blah, 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 to shopping um, 230. Except there's an S, small s. And now if I look at this, blah, blah, blah is there, and blah, how come I can't spell blah, 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 um, has the, the right number of new savings compared to, to old savings. Okay, you can give more than one argument to shopping to a function. It doesn't have to just be one, so for perhaps they go on multiple trips um, of the same cost. And so now it's not just spend that gets taken away, it's spend multiplied by trips. So let's run that. Now, if I run shopping, it's going to tell me, ah, there's a problem. I haven't said how many trips. So I'm going to say everyone spends 50 pounds, but they go, uh, they go three times. And that gives that. And then the final thing with functions that you can do is assign default values. And this is the one time where um, you can, well, you can use equal signs elsewhere, but it's a good idea to use equal signs because that, that, that means a very particular thing. So I can say, well, the default spend is 300 and the default number of trips is 1. So I run that. And now I can, in fact, run um, shopping with no arguments because it will just take 301. Or I can run shopping... Uh, just with one of those arguments. So maybe they only spend 13 pounds. And finally, I can run shopping with more. Um, and I can even only run the one I want. So I can say trips equals two. All right. So then there's a 600 pound spend. So there are uh, how to create functions in R. Return and uh, simply in brackets the variables.